If you think you better than battle Here is one thing you won't see a lot of. Me arriving at the Bellagio on Friday night at midnight. Midnight, let's get a session started, let's go. This house is now a litany Things I thought I'd never be Man who has opinions on an ottoman Among other things I used to think I missed the road the crushing fame, the sold out shows and I just sing head, shoulders, knees and toes Like I'd forgotten them But I'm alive Baby, I'm thriving Straddle, double straddle? Yeah. Oh yeah I'm living my best life I wake up with the sunrise It does not look Sometimes this sucks to tell the truth and I took it hard like people do but I'm learning Once how twice. to eat the fruit Once. is in season Never thought I'd be a grown ass man Do you know what they say the best laid plans Now I'm holding on to my daughter's hand I've got a reason to be alive Oh yeah, baby I'm thriving So, second session in a row, first hand, I win a big pot. But this time, your man that had the queens is literally sitting at the other end of the table staring at me. Why? For a minute and 20 seconds, he sits there and it's like this awkward silence and he's just staring at me. Mad. I asked you if you wanted to run it twice. You said no. You lost. Get off the table. Bye. So our stint at the Must Move game didn't last very long. Long enough for me to ruin some guy's night, and long enough for me to win a pot with a set of fours. That's about it. Less than an hour into my session, and I'm ushered to the main game. There are a couple notable things about the main game. One, our buddy Christian Soto is in the game in the sixth seat. And the other notable thing is that this game is extremely short. A few seats are legit empty, and a couple seats have players walking. So we're playing five-handed. A lot. And one of the first hands I play at this table, the hijack opens to $30 off of what appears to be a $600 stack. 
I flatten the cutoff with ace jack of spades, just looking to take a flop rather than raising it 3-bet and have to fold. The button and small blind both come along. As the dealer is burning and turning the flop, I notice that the hijack isn't playing $600. He has a full stack of black and a 1k chip nestled to the right of his chip stack that I couldn't see from my vantage point. That changes things considerably. I missed a pre-flop 3-bet. Oh well, we're here now, four ways to the flop, let's continue. Deuce, King, Queen with one spade. The small blind checks and the hijack bets $20. Damn, I wish I had three bet. This would have been a ton easier to play with the betting lead in some position. As is, I have a gut shot and a backdoor draw. An easy continue facing his small sizing. So we call. The button folds and the small blind comes along. The nine of diamonds turn doesn't change a lot for my actual hand, although in theory it's probably better for my range than the openers. As I'm thinking about how to respond to this card, the small blind now just leads into both of us for $150. Well, that makes this decision easy. The hijack folds and I quickly do as well. Something was off tonight with my camera placement. I kept having to fiddle with it. It wasn't balanced right at one point, and at another point, it was just too zoomed out. So during a hand in which I had folded preflop, I decided to do some tweaking. Unbeknownst to me, this hand would be interesting. I said, I folded preflop, but as you can see, the cutoff has opened to $40, and our buddy Christian in the small blind has raised to $200. The big blind now puts in a 4 bet to $530. I had never seen the big blind before, and all I really know about him at this point is that he's been in quite a few hands, coming in firing. Three bets, four bets, shoves. He's in the streets. The cutoff folds and action is now back on Christian in the small blind. I'm still in the process of fiddling around and trying to get the camera zoom to cooperate. After some deliberation, he finds the five bet to $830 and the big blind snap shoves all in for about 3k or so, and Christian snap mucks ace-king offsuit. It's always nice when they just tell you that they have pocket aces. A bit later, the player in the big blind in that hand would tell everyone that he's mainly a limit player, but has been picking up monster hands since joining our table. This key piece of information would have probably saved our buddy Chin about $800. After going through a series of hands in which I entered and won multi-way pots simply by breathing on them with less than stellar hands, we stumble into this one. The hand starts with the button opening the $30. The frequency that this button was opening when folded to was a bit too often for my tastes. He just can't have legit hands all these times. So we put in a 3-bet from the small blind with 4-5 of clubs. The goal here is to punish him for opening too wide. That punishment is delayed, as he calls my 3-bet. 
Heads up, we see a flop of King, Queen, Six, Rainbow. Great. This board definitely hints the range of hands that I would be three betting with from the small blind. Ace, King, Queens, Kings, all that type of jazz. And just in case, we have some backdoor draws working. I continue for $150. That should probably do the trick. But it doesn't do the trick. The button now raises to $400. Oops. My hand hits the muck as he flashes me king-queen for top two pair. Well, I guess maybe he is allowed to have hands on the button. As you saw, the session started off gangbusters, but after that first hand, there hasn't really been any other hand with real meat on the bone. Until this one. This one begins with the under the gun player limping in. No idea why. The player next to act raises to $30, which is small, but whatever. And I look down at ace king offsuit in the big blind, and I'm poised to pounce. But action isn't on me. It's on the button. And the button has ideas of his own. He raises to $120. Now I'm given pause. The button hasn't been in action much. I mean, the kid hasn't played a hand that I really remember at all. That skews his range into being strong as opposed to someone like me that might take his line with 6-5 suited. We're pretty deep here, probably around 250 big blinds effective with the button. I wanted a hand with meat... And I got it. I bump it up again. $400. Both under the gun players get out of the way, and now the button tanks. He finds the call. Heads up, we see 10 deuce 3 with two spades. No ace. No king. Nothing even resembling a card with formal wear at all, actually. And I don't even have a spade. This isn't the best spot, but... I do have the betting lead and could just have aces, couldn't I? That 10 is worrisome though. The button holding pocket 10s is likely. I continue for $200. He tanks again and calls. The turn king, hallelujah. salvation. I feel better, although I'm still not out of the woods with that 10 being out there, but I continue for $350, which is a size that should keep him in the pocket I want him in. Another tank, and another call. The river seven of clubs shouldn't change anything. I should be ahead of everything except for pocket tens and the front door spade and back door diamond flush have missed. I debate over my sizing here and settle on $600. Enough to get value from slightly weaker hands, but too much for him to comfortably raise, unless I'm dead. Another tank begins. This one longer than the others by a large margin. One minute later, he finds the $600 call. Turns over ace-king offsuit as well, and this hand ends in a very anticlimactic way. That didn't end the way I wanted it to end, you know? I wanted it to end a different way. <laughs> I think there was a very good chance of it ending a very different way. <laughs> I'm being honest, I wanted it to end like, you know, like, uh, yeah, I wanted him to be in pain. I'm not even going to lie. He seems like a nice kid. I just, like, I wanted to put pain on him, you know? There's nothing wrong yeah. with that. <laughs> What they'd say 
Please come back and hold me close And kiss the hurt away If my lonely tears could speak mm -hmm, Would you listen? I just remember I was playing EverQuest back then. Uh -uh. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah. I was in, I was so addicted to EverQuest. It was ridiculous. Still to this day, if I hear the EverQuest music, like I, I get emotional. Like it's like very nostalgic. The straddle is on here, and our new high stakes limit playing friend in seat seven, also the low jack, opens to sixty dollars. The cutoff to my direct right calls, and I flat the button with Ace Queen offsuit. The straddler joins the party. Four ways and not much doing on the six, seven, three with two clubs board and it gets checked through. The turn ace of diamonds falls and I see three players check again and the action is returned to me. Odds are I have the best hand here, but odds being what they are, there's also a frequency at which one or more of these players has some sort of draw. I bet $120 to charge them for such holdings. The straddler, he's out. The original opening low jack continues, and the cutoff exits too. The backdoor diamond draw fills when the eight of that suit shows up, but the low jack checks again. Could he have a flush? Sure, but he could also just have some weaker aces that will pay off a river bet. We slide $240 into the middle, obviously willing to eject if a raise comes in. But he folds. Oh, it is that time of night again. Actually, it's much later than that time of night. It is late, late, late night. Um, been in this game for about four, four and a half hours. It's, I don't know, four in the morning. It's getting late. Um, session started off like gangbusters. Doubled up, first hand, literal, first hand. Since then, bled a little away, won some small pots, nothing of uh, note. My buddy Chin joined the table. And um, I just can't get anything going. I'm still up. It's still going well. But look at this guy. We just can't get it, you know? What is this, the mid-session mid update? <laughs> this is, I was just talking about you. I said you joined the table. I'm just chilling. Yeah, we're just chilling. But I got I got maybe an hour left in me. I find then, it's king to aces. Is, <laughs> I'm even Just uh, now? No, before. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Yeah, he got owned by limit players. We had limit <laughs> limit so player join our game. The famous midsection update. This is it. We're doing it up. We're doing it in style now. Up it's here, because they're not using this. Just because nobody's here. Because <laughs> nobody's using this area. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna give it about an hour. Then um, we're gonna get out of here because I gotta get some sleep, and then I gotta do this all again tomorrow. So, hang in there a little bit longer. So the limit player that was directly to the left of Chin in the seven seat has left. A player from another 510 game adjacent to us saw the fun we were having and decided he wanted to table change and bring his monstrous stack of orange chips to our table at 5 in the morning. Soft game, he thought. I'll snipe. This never ends well. It's me again. Just wanted to tell you about a new offering we have at the Academy. How to win big pots and make friends through slow rolling, badly timed needling, and always a poker player's favorite, dealing life-lasting emotional trauma. Classes are filling up. Join now. Sorry, 
to take this back here. I see him, sir. That's how you do them, you know? That's exactly what you do to them. That's how you do it. Pull it in slower, savor it. It's like pulling it in so fast, you gotta pull it in slow. Make sure he sees you pulling it in, too. It's them showing his king. Yeah, yeah. So you pulled it directly to you, you gotta pull it around this way. Get some of that. So he can smell it going by. <laughs> I still think I caught a good enough whip of it <laughs> coming that way. <laughs> That's, I don't feel bad either. I love when that happens. Love it. I love it. Yeah. 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 I love when they freshly move over. Like, and don't even marinate for a while and you get the feel. Just, like, jump right in. I've been that guy, too. It feels bad. Ambitious in the ones you try to bluff. Yeah. Well, I just try to bluff every time, so sometimes you <laughs> It feels worse when you're that guy. <laughs> I should have just kept my black ass at my other table. <laughs> Okay, we're home. It's late, late. It's five in the morning, and I really don't have anything additional to say. After the mid-session update, I don't think I played a hand. Maybe I played one. Peak for this session, for me, as far as chip count, was probably <laughs> hand number three. After hand number three, I think I just started slowly bleeding off. Um, not in a bad way, just that's just how it goes. Just sometimes you just get dealt out of sessions. Um, so I was in the game for uh, 2,500 and I cast out a little over 34, like 34 and change. So up like $900, a grand or so in five hours. Who's complaining? Am I complaining? I'm not complaining about that. I'm complaining that it's late and by the time I get to bed, I'm going to wake up and my Saturday is going to be ruined We'll make the most of it. Um, so let's wrap this thing up. If you like the vlogs, like the vlogs, um, subscribe, leave me a comment, and I will probably respond. And hopefully I can just go up and get to sleep, like, right away. And um, I'll catch you next time. Good night. Hey. hey. I couldn't figure out a way to start the vlog, so I'm just going to start the vlog by showing you in bed, and then I'll tell them I'm going to go play poker. In the morning I wake another beautiful day I finally figured the recipe I bet I've given and taken Life it is what you make it Nothing petty can get to me A little bit of slow is buzzing my game is great and i'm leaving i'm just not feeling it i'm like lethargic i'm tired mentally i'm not there it's just time to go the guy asked if i was vlogging i said no i only vlog good plays if you would have shoved there i would have walked to the cage to buy you more chips like i wouldn't you wouldn't even have to deal do the embarrassing walk yeah now I gotta make you. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you, but I didn't mess up that many times this time. <laughs> Not that many. Near perfect. <laughs> I think I played um, a shack of diamonds where I value bet uh, the river with top pair and got raised and folded. I think that happened after the mid-session update.
but that's that's about it. What brings you down here from Washington? Uh, actually, there's a magic tournament. Oh, the card game? Yeah, yeah. I used to play in college. Yeah. That's a, yep. Yeah. Wish I still had those cards. Yeah, actually, I just sold all mine. I had, like, alpha beta stuff. Yeah, I wish I had. Yeah. Although back then they weren't like collectibles, you know what I mean? Like, we didn't even use yeah, 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 like it was just throw them everywhere, they're all ripped up. Like, it's